to um, Deputy Kenny's uh, speech here today as well. He all speaks from the heart, and I think he made uh, a very important contribution on the record of the Chamber here today uh, as well. Um Falcha Osin Deshva Eg Lauerter and Over Shot and You. And I, like most TDs, have received emails and phone calls from survivors both from people born in mother and baby homes and from women who gave birth there as well. And I want to discuss the issue of redress, but before I do, I also want to focus on perhaps what's probably a most, more important issue, and that's the issue of access to records. Survivors of mother and baby homes are growing older, and those who are still searching for their biological mothers are acutely aware that their chances of finding their mothers are reducing and passing by the day. Uh, for the survivors I've spoken to, all they want is their files. Access to the files for them is actually more important in many cases than redress. And I understand that there are concerns with EU GDPR rules, but for God's sake, people in our country want access to their birth certs, their medical records. And we've been told it's because of an EU law in relation to this. If it is the case, I believe this is a serious legislative overreach by the European Union in Ireland, and we should be looking at legal ways to challenge the European law in relation to this to make sure people get what we know is the right thing in relation to their, their own records. Um, to proportion redress to survivors based on the length of time that they spent in institution is obviously cruel uh, in, in many ways, but especially cruel, doubly cruel, for those who don't have the records, don't know when they left those homes, so don't know exactly how long they were there for. Minister, before I get into the details of my concern uh, around the redress, I also want to talk briefly about uh, Bespera. Um, and what I'm about to share uh, may sound strange, but a woman contacted uh, me uh, in the last year and asked me was I aware of the fact that a mother and baby home still operates uh, in Ireland. Now, I was skeptical, uh, to be honest, but I, I knew that I had a responsibility to do further research. And we talk about Bespera Mother and Baby Home, we talk about it as if it was in the past. But I would urge dep deputies to do some research on this. There is today a Bespera Centre, supported by the state uh, today, um, and it takes women in residentially um, for parental assessment, um, mostly uh, unmarried women. And the state then determines, after observation, whether or not these women get to keep their babies. This happens today and is paid for by the state. The building, if you look at it uh, on Google Maps, looks identical to their mother and baby home. Um, and state intervention, strangely enough, again, I, I found it's really hard to believe when I did the research, but it often kicks in when the woman is pregnant. And last year, Tusla confirmed to me that there were 127 unborn children on the child protection notification scheme. It's an unbelievable fact that there are unborn children under child protection in this state today. Now, I don't mean to impugn any of the people who work in the modern-day uh, Bespera Centre. I don't know enough about the organisation to make any judgement. And I will say that there are many people at the coalface of social work in this state doing really good and often impossible work of value to help people. But the echoes of this particular uh, case with regards to the past are startling, Minister, would you not agree? Now, I raised today leaders' questions, uh, the issue that 200 children have died uh, known to child protection services in this state in the last decade. And I believe we need an urgent debate around that particular issue. There is a shocking rate of mortality among children currently in state care. But back to the issue of, of, of redress. An AIM2 representative for Tum, Luke Silk, has done a good bit of research on the Glenamadi home. And he showed me an article earlier today which was referenced by the Commission's report. It's from the Connacht Tribune in 1924, and it describes the home and the children. And the language is upsetting. And the article states, there are walls which reek with damp in winter. They have not seen a mason's trowel or a painter's brush for years. There are long, narrow, gloomy corridors. Water has to be carried for the children's ablution. Uh, there is no single permanent bath, and the babies have to be bathed in portable fixtures. The waifs and strays, the orphans and the abandons, the nameless little ones of this county, 
under the care of the Bon Secure nuns who have been charged with the task of lifting the blight from their young lives and sending them into the world, cleansed and self-respecting members of society. They are, they are to grow up in happiness and peace. But with respect, Minister, many of them did not grow up in happiness and peace. Every single one of them, regardless of the length of time that they spent in that home, deserve compensation. The, the best most of these babies could have hoped for was be, to be sent out to families. And many who were sent out to families were abused in form of labour and housework. The Children's Home of Glenamady in Galway was operated by the same organisation that later operated the Tomb Home. And it was only in operation in 1922 to 1924. But during that time, 50 babies died uh, in that home. And your redress scheme, Minister, offers nothing, not a single red cent, to the survivors of mother and babies' homes who were farmed out as children into family, into some cases who were treated appallingly. Your redress package does, not, does nothing for these. Neither you nor I can attempt to comprehend how much some of these people must have suffered. And yet, what your package does, it places an economic value on their experience and it tells them that their experience is without value, without cost to them in their lives. The Commission makes one very striking point in relation to these children in the final report. It states, such a child would have been especially unwelcome in a farmhouse where the marriage of an inheriting son depended on clearing the home of non-inheriting siblings. And that gives you an idea of some of the motivations of the relationships that would have existed in those uh, 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 places. But I would urge you, Minister, don't forget these children. Gurvila Margot.